In a speech today to business leaders, the Work and Pension Secretary, Mel Stride, talked about the huge opportunity to fill vacancies with unemployed Brits. Stricter visa rules, reducing businesses' dependence on overseas labour, and he'll, he see he forecast a decrease in legal migration. So basically, we've got to get all those people we've allowed not to work, who we pay not to work, whose numbers have exploded since the pandemic, We've got to get them back to work. Well, yes, Mel Stride, I agree with that 100%. I think we've been far too soft to allow so many to take that option. But then he goes on to talk about the fact we've got a chronic shortage of HGV drivers and many other skills. So he's talking about setting up boot camps and job training schemes. Now, this is, I think, a willful misuse of the word Boot camps. Boot camp sort of brings about the short, sharp shock that we used to have for young offenders back in the 1970s. And this would be nothing like a boot camp. It's a very emotive word. Uh, but they are talking about having training centres, about encouraging people to upskill. Uh, I have to say, personally, I think this should be happening at school from the age of about 15. I think so many people that go to university would be far better off learning, engineering, or whatever, whatever other skill it was. Uh, but is this better late than never? Or are so many of those who've opted not to work, frankly, in a situation where they've given up and don't care? Well, who better uh, to get on this than Nick Buckley, charity worker, independent candidate for Mayor of Manchester, and a friend of this programme? Nick, you know, I get what Mel Stride's saying. Of course I do. But... When someone gets to the stage where they're happy for the doctor to sign them off, you know, I've got depression, doc. Oh, that's OK, matey. You haven't got to work for the rest of your life. The government will give you money. If you've got to that mental frame of mind, we are prepared to accept that as your future. Is this sort of carrot, and that's what it is, this carrot of learning a skill that could get you a well-paid job, is it likely to have any impact? Or do we need perhaps more of a stick than a carrot to solve this problem? Nigel, this is, this is complicated. And this makes me angry. It really makes me angry. We've had a Tory government 14 years in power who have done nothing. And just before the election where they're going to get destroyed, they decide to start throwing out fantastic sounding policies they should have implemented mm. 14 years ago. Now, first of all, we can't blame people for picking options that were legal options that the government have put in place in front of them. Now, I know people who sign on benefits. I, I did this 35 years ago myself because it was the best option at the time. What governments don't understand is a certain things called pull factors and push factors. So a pull factor in this scenario would be better wages. And how do we get better wages? It's reducing immigration. And there's mm. also things then called um, push factors. So we need to push people off benefits, but you can't push people off benefits into a life that's worse for them. The government have created, not just this government, but this, they've done a lot of damage. This has been going on for 50, 60 years, where yeah. we've been treating people in this country like sheep and saying to them, keep your mouth shut, sit on benefits, watch Coronation Street, and don't criticise us. And when you do, we'll give you a little bit more money. And we're killing people in this country. We're ripping their self-respect away from them. We're ripping their aspirations. All just so we can make government's life a little bit easier. Yeah, no, Nick, I think there's a lot of truth in that. And as you say, this isn't just this government's fault. It's been going on for a long, long time. And when it comes to immigration, when it comes to upskilling, let's remind ourselves what a former Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, once said. A world leader in science, a world leader in financial and business services, a world leader in energy and the environment from nuclear to renewables, a world leader in the creative industries, and yes, a world leader in modern manufacturing too, drawing on the talents of all to create British jobs for British workers. There we are. Nick Buckley, I'm going to love you and leave you on that. Thank you. We've heard it all before. Nothing's changed yet. I doubt it's going too soon. It's complex, as you say.